Fake patient interview. Subject has no recorded name. Alias listed as the Joker. In the room is Warden Sharp and myself, Dr. Young. Oh, is this another one of those boring psych evaluation tests? No, it's not. So, you're the famous Joker. In the flesh. So, Doc, do you want me to look at the ink plots again? The first one is a kitten I had when I was a child. The second is... Hmm, let's see. A dead elephant. The third is a... Funny. Now let's skip the jokes. Skip the jokes? Hey, Sharpie! Didn't she get my permanent record? Be quiet, clown! Every doctor that has ever interviewed you claims a different type of psychosis. Everything from multiple personality disorders to, well, the list is endless. <laughs> I do my best. Well, I don't believe it. Anything can be cured given the correct treatment. And you think you can cure me? Oh, I know I can. Take patient interview 17. Joker remains uncooperative. My earlier diagnosis remains true. I believe he enjoys his persona too much. What's up, Doc? Today I thought we'd try something different. Oh, you make me blush, Doc. I have a girlfriend. Dr. Quinzel, I know. I've seen the tapes. I saw what happened. What can I say? I'm a charmer. Anyway, I thought it would be good to talk about your childhood. Oh, ever heard of romance, Doc? I don't give up the goods for free. You'll have to try harder. What are you hiding? Didn't you hear me? You scratch my back, Doc, and, well, I won't have you wrapped in plastic and left in a gutter. Take patient interview 20. Joker is more interesting than I originally believed. When Project Titan is operational, I believe Joker will be the perfect test subject. Good afternoon. Today, I thought I'd skip back to our previous conversations about your family. Of course. I was born in a small fishing village. I always wanted to join the circus, but my father wouldn't really let me. I don't believe you. My father was a cop. One week from retirement when a mob... I've seen the movie. What are you scared of? Scared? Yes, scared. There's obviously something. Something that made you what you are. What if... What if I'm too scared to remember? It hurts too much. Then I can help you. These are the private notes of Dr. Young. Titan is a success. Even my funding worries have been solved after the unexpected donations from Mr. White. Joker has also shown a remarkable interest in the possibility of a cure. Once the protein bonding process is finalized, I will... Dr. Young, you ready? Oh, yes, yes, come in. You'll hurt my feelings, Doc, keeping me waiting like that. Sit down. You can leave us. You sure? We're fine. Aren't we, Joker? Oh, yes. Well, if you insist, I'm just outside, okay? So is he here? Did your patient X arrive? Yes, I must say progressing more rapidly than I expected. Uh, but enough of that. Let's talk about you. No. Let's talk more about your Titan project. My what? How do you... How do I know you have Bane strapped to a table in the basement while you pump him dry? Would you believe a lucky guess? I've been a fool. Joker was behind it all. He's Jack White. He gave me the money, pulled the strings to release Bane. How could I not have seen it? blackmailing me. He has a crazy plan to create an army of monsters. I want out, but... Uh, hello? Hello? Dr. Young's office. Please call for Mr. White. What? Hello, Doc. We need to talk. I'm not doing it, Joker. Do you hear me? Wait. How did you get access to a phone? Oh, Reminds me of my childhood. Another lie? Who knows? I certainly don't, but let's not get distracted with details. So, anyway, I want my monsters. I sent you back the money. I, I don't want it. Do I blame you? 
look like I care about money. <laughs> I just want my monsters, Doc. And if you don't give them to me, well, then it won't be funny. Taped patient evaluation one. Patient name is Victor Zaz. Diagnosed clinically insane after the murder of at least 20 women in the Gotham area. <laughs> Hello, Victor. I'm Dr. Cassidy. Seeing as this is our first session, let's spend some time getting to know each other. I don't need to know you, Miss Cassidy. Everything is meaningless. Don't you think that's a very negative outlook on life, Victor? You've no doubt read my file. Yes. Yes, I have. It says you come from a wealthy family, that your parents died, and how you lost all the money gambling. And none of it matters. Why do you keep saying that, Victor? Because the only thing that does matter is the mark. Have you seen my work, Miss Cassidy? If you're referring to the marks on your... Of course I mean my tally marks. And I have a space for yours. Did you want to see where? Taped patient evaluation five. Victor is not responding well to treatment. Victor, yesterday we spoke about the people you killed. Ah, the zombies. They are all people, Victor. They are zombies. Continuously shuffling through the daily grind, waiting for someone to liberate them. You mean kill them? The police report states that you've murdered, or liberated, if you like, 
20 young women in the last three months. Each had her throat slit and was left posed. They were all lucky to be chosen to receive my gift. I doubt they would agree with you. Really? How about you, Miss Cassidy? As you take the elevator to your apartment each night, open the six locks to apartment 433. Remember you forgot to buy your cat food. Again? How do you know As where you I... sit down on your favorite red chair, cat on lap, just waiting for something to happen. I can make it happen, Sarah. I am your salvation. Patient's name is Victor Saez. For the record, the patient has transferred from Dr. Cassidy, who is on leave after the incident last week. Hello, Victor. Please, take a seat. Guards, you can leave us. Sorry, Doctor. Warden's orders. I can't leave you alone with him. I understand. Hello, Victor. How are you feeling today? Victor, I can't help you if you don't speak. Depressed. Does that help you? Can you get into my mind, Doctor? Why depressed? I'm just thinking about the one that got away. The one I chose. I needed the mark. I want the mark! Victor has been more subdued recently. Response to medication has been poor. Hello, Victor. Is there anything you'd like to talk about today? Victor! This is going nowhere. Guard! Get him out of here! You heard the doctor. Get out. Didn't you hear me? He's got another! Oh, get a trike in him! Get a trike in him! Oh, God! He's on Bill! He's cutting him! Get him off! Get him off! We need help here! Victor has been in isolation since the attack on the guard last week. As I wait for him to be brought up to me, I have had time to review his notes. I am increasingly worried he cannot be cured. He has no empathy for his victims. Deep down, I believe he views all of us as potential victims. Doc, are you okay? What's happening? It's Zaz. He broke out of isolation. He's gone. Oh, God! Don't worry, Doc. You're the safest place. He's definitely left the island. Of course. But someone needs to alert the authorities. He'll need to kill again. Do you understand me? Needs to. Oh, no. He's gone after Dr. Cassidy. Session 2. Patient name, Waylon Jones, a.k.a. Killer Croc. So, is this the part where you try and reason with me? Find out why I did it, Doc? We're here to help you, Mr. Jones. You got a cure for me then, Doc? Can you make me normal? Normal is a poor choice of words. No one is really normal, are they? <clears throat> Figure as much. So, 
How about this, Doc? You let me go now, and I won't eat you. You don't really eat people. It's just an urban myth. Oh, you think? <laughs> Keep believing that, Doc. Sam, shut up! You think I'm scared of you, Cash? I've got your scent. You're crap! And I've got yours, too. No what? It stinks! Carry on, Doc. Please, don't do that again, Mr. Cash. It's not helping. I'm sorry about that, but what can we do if you insist on hospitalizing three dogs? Strap on whatever you like, Doc. This thing just tickles. I'm happy to wait here. Wait for the bat. He'll be back, and I'll kill him. Then Cash. Then you. In your dream. Now get him. Patient interview, Valen Jones. Progress has been slow. What happened back in that house? Just business. Business? What kind of business practices result in a house full of mutilated corpses? I don't like having my time wasted. Someone doesn't pay. They need a lesson. They owed me. So you killed them. Tore up their bodies. The police never found all the pieces. They should have looked in the sewers. Are you saying you hid them there? After a while. Usually takes about eight hours. <laughs> Time to go, Brock. Get him! Patient interview. Waylon Jones, a.k.a. Killer Croc. Last night, the patient was pacified after a breakout attempt. Guard Aaron Cash is in hospital. Reports state that the patient attacked Cash and in the struggle consumed his left hand. Cash is lucky to be alive. He lost a lot of blood. Me too. I nearly choked on that bony hand of his. <laughs> That's disgusting. He could have died. He's just food to me. And once I get a taste, I want the rest of the meal. You know what I mean. Get him out of here. Now. <laughs> Got your scent too, lady. I'll see you around. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Patient interview 21. Patient's name is Edward Nigma, also known as the Riddler. So, Edward, Warden Sharp tells me you've been leaving threatening riddles scrawled on the asylum walls. Again. One would have to be severely paranoid to read threats into harmless riddles, Dr. Young. May I test you with one? Very well. What is it that walks on four legs, then two legs, and finally three legs? A human being. As a baby, it crawls on four legs. As an adult, it walks on two. And in later years, it uses a cane. <laughs> Good try. But the answer to all three is a baby. True, it crawls on all fours, but cut off its legs and it can only wiggle on two limbs. Give it a crutch, it can hobble around on three. You see? That's horrible. How can you even joke about that? Easily, Doctor. It's not my baby. Taped interview 39. Patient's name is Edward Nigma. At this point in time, I've yet to decide if Mr. Nigma is a suitable candidate for the Titan process. I'd like to talk about your childhood. Miserable. Next. By all accounts, that is where your fascination with riddles began. I believe discussing those years could explain your compulsive behavior. Very well. My father hated me. Always called me a moron. I was determined to prove him wrong, so I entered a contest at school. 
A $20 prize to the kid who could figure out an almost impossible logic problem. I won, of course. And that pleased your father? Hardly. He was convinced I had cheated. He kept yelling, you must have cheated. Admit it, you moron, you cheated. But I swore I didn't. And he hit me for lying. I'm sorry to hear that, Edward. Don't be. He was right. Patient interview 44. This is yet another interview with Edward Nigma. I have yet to make up my mind whether he's a genius or just deluded. Whichever one he is, just being in his company is both irritating and exhausting. Hello, Miss Young. You look tired. Anything you need my help with? No, thank you, Edward. I am here to help you. We all are. Forgive my arrogance, Doctor, but if you think I need your help, well, you're in the right place. Let's look at it a different way. Throughout your career, you have specialized in bizarre traps and convoluted clues that more often than not result in the death of the unfortunate participants. And if the citizens of Gotham were smarter, my games would be merely an amusing diversion. Instead of death traps. You really should be thanking me. Weeding out the ignorant, the stupid, the useless. But don't worry. I'm sure you would survive. What a lovely photo on your desk, Doctor. Your family. Mother, perhaps. Put that down. Get out! Go on! Let's discuss your obsession with Batman. Hardly an obsession, Miss Young. I simply feel an obligation to expose him. You know who he is? More important, I know what he is. What do you mean? It's obvious. The mask, the weapons, the scare tactics. He's a criminal. No different than Joker, Two-Face, or myself. Most people consider him a hero. Most people are idiots. They can't see Batman for the villain he is. Riddle me this! How did he get his car and his gadgets? I don't... With money stolen from the criminals he defeats. Why does Gordon turn a blind eye to his antics? Batman bribes him! The answers are right in front of your stupid gawking face! Hey, please, calm down. Wake up, Gotham! <laughs> no sane, law-abiding man does those things. No one's that selfless. Batman is as vile as the cop. Security! Security! This is my final interview with Edward. Gone as far as I can. I can no longer tolerate his mood swings and tantrums. I have more important work to be getting on with. He will be transferred to Dr. Whistler's care as of next week. Good morning, Doctor. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Edward. You're in a good mood. I'm always in rare spirits when I'm about to be released. Edward, you know you don't come up for parole for another three years. First thing I'll do is have dinner at that Italian place on 19th Street. Seriously, Edward. I only hope Joker hasn't completely trashed the city. Oh well, I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Wait, have you been in contact with the Joker? He escaped Arkham weeks ago. And yet, one hears things. What things? What have you heard? Oh, something about a surprise party for Batman. I forget the rest. You know Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edward, if you know anything, you've got to tell me. Lives could be at stake. What did Joker say? You forget, Doctor. I'm the one who asks the riddles. Patient interview. Pamela Lillian Isley, November 12, 11.33 a.m. Good morning, Pamela. How are you today? Fine. Today is a special day. What do you mean? This is the anniversary of my new life, when I found my true self, my destiny. Are you referring to the event with Dr. Woodrow? Yes. What else? 
Of course, at the time, I thought Jason had poisoned me. But in retrospect, he did me a huge favor. And why do you believe what he did has helped you? He showed me the bigger world. A world I should protect. Of course, my first offer was rejected. Offer? You tried to kill everyone in Gotham. Well, sometimes you need to broom back hard in order to make something flourish. Patient interview, Pamela Lillian Isley, November 14th, 10.21 a.m. Hello, Pamela. Today I'd like to go back to something you said in our last conversation. Ask me anything you like. You said your first offer to help Gotham was rejected. How can you possibly believe that? Well, what do you mean? You released thousands of poisonous spores into Gotham, killed hundreds of people. How does that help anybody? I'm not interested in bodies, Doctor. Horrible, fleshy sacks walking around destroying my poor babies with their greed and arrogance. But aren't you one of those fleshy sacks? You're a... were a doctor, too. How can you turn your back on us? Quite easily as it happens. But not you, Stephen. You're different. I feel we have a connection. Really? You do? Of course. Pamela, I got you what you asked for. Do you like it? Oh, yes, Stephen. I love it. Such a beautiful flower. Do you mind if I keep it? Oh, no, Pamela. I can't leave it. It's against all the rules. I'll just bring it and show it to you when I visit. But it's me, Stephen. I get so lonely on my own. You wouldn't want me to be lonely, would you? No, of course not. Keep it. Just don't let anyone see. Really, no one. You can trust me, Stephen. Thank you. Now give me a kiss. Uh, I can't. People will see you. No one's watching. What's wrong with you? Don't you love me? Call me Ivy. Of course I love you. Where is Dr. Kellerman? How should I know, Warden? It does seem careless of you to have lost him. I have no time for your games, Miss Isley. Tell me where you have him. We have security footage of you and him leaving your cell last night. So? Do I need to spell it out? We know you hypnotized him, or, or whatever it is you do. We know he took you somewhere, but conveniently, security cameras across the island were mysteriously covered by leaves and flowers at 3 a.m. Now tell me what it is. I'm not saying a word unless you do exactly what I tell you to do. We found him. No thanks to you. The poor man could have died. So? He has a wife, a child. As do the plants he travels underfoot. The spores he breathes in and destroys have children. Why does he deserve anything more than them? You people ignore what is happening in front of your eyes. I refuse to put the welfare of plants before the welfare of people. And that is why you will lose. There's more happening than you know, Warden. It's all connected. Harleen Quinzel? Call me Harley. Everyone does. I'm surprised you want to intern here at Arkham. I've always had a thing for extreme personalities. You can't deny there's an element of glamour to these super criminals. I warn you right now, these are hardcore psychotics. Most would rather kill you than speak to you. I'm sure I'll be fine, Doctor. They'll eat you for breakfast. I mean it. One or two of them will enjoy it, too. Be careful. Patient interview number one. So, I'm your first, am I, Tuts? Well, you know what they say, you never forget your first time. I'll try to make it memorable for you. Oh, you already have. Tell me, why do you do the things you do? Why do you think I do it? Fame, notoriety, a desire to stand out from the crowd, a wicked sense of humor. <sighs> You're good. How did you figure me out, Doc? I've had doctors poking around in here for years, and 
no one was as astute, and if you don't mind my saying, beautiful as you. Really? Ah, oh, you're just playing with me. Well, you'll never know, will you? Unless... Unless what? Tell me. Care to tell me how these got in my office? Simple, really. I put them there. Why? You don't like flowers? I think the guards would be interested to know you've been out of your cell. Oh, if you really were going to tell, you already would have. How do you know I haven't already? Oh, sweets, I like you. I really do. Even your name. Rework it a bit and we get... Harley Quinn, like the clown. I know, I've heard it before. It's a name that puts a smile on my face. It makes me think there's someone here I can relate to. Someone who might like to hear my secrets. Really? Go on. Not here, my dear. Too many ears and eyes. Come back tonight. I'll be ready for you. He's crazy, you know. Who? Batman? No, Santa Claus. Of course, Batman! Always Batman! I've seen it in his eyes. Screaming mad stalkers. And dishonest. Hiding his face behind a fright mask. Well, no masks for me. I have nothing to hide. I laugh at the cruel absurdity of the world. But Batman, Batman, he's got them all fooled. He's made them think he can make a difference. That he can actually make things better. And the joke of it is, they all believe it. The police? The police. The media. The frickin' junior rangers. Every last sack of walking meat in this urban cesspool. Listen, sweets. Batman knows we're all on the same funhouse slide into madness. Why won't he admit it? He's up there in his belfry laughing at us. And the real gag is, the miserable liar is allowed to run free while I'm in here. That's really incisive. Then you understand, don't you? You know why I do what I have to do. You know Gotham's only real savior is me. I got what you wanted. You did? I mean, uh, good. How did you smuggle it in? Uh, actually, I don't want to know. So are you ready to stop the evil murdering bat once and for all? Of course I am. He needs to pay for what he's done to you. Give it here then, quickly.
patient interview one. The patient was referred to me after the incident with Dr. Murphy. He appears to have suffered a breakdown of sorts. I believe it was brought about after the loss of his wife and child. As yet, the patient has been unable to speak. Continued observation shows little mental activity. It's as if the shock of what he saw triggered his mental collapse. There's someone in here! It's him. We found him. Break down the door! Note to self. As ever, it is difficult to continue my research under such conditions. Step away from Dr. Combs! Now! Get down on the ground! We found them. Someone get a medic. Oh, God, what's he done to him? Patient interview six. Dr. Crane has been back in custody for three weeks. Regular sessions have been inconclusive. I am not sure he is actually insane. Good evening, Stephen. How are you tonight? I'm conducting the session, Jonathan. Of course. If that helps you cope, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let's talk about the events three weeks ago. What did you think you'd achieve? Dr. Murphy is still in therapy. I wanted to understand him. His personal demons, his fears. It's all quite fascinating, really. But you are... were a respected doctor. A brilliant mind. Now just another resident in Arkham. Can I have a drink? A strong one? This kind of question bores me. I'm afraid not. Interesting choice of words, Doctor. Tell me, what are you afraid of? Patient interview nine. Dr. Crane continues to evade questions. I believe he is quite sane, just evil. He takes no interest in the people he has hurt. His research appears to be the only motivating factor in his life. What is it about fear that drives your obsession? Fear drives everything, Stephen. Everything. Your life is governed by fear. Every decision you make is a product of that fear. Don't be ridiculous. You married your wife. Margaret, isn't it? Because you were scared of dying alone. You have children because you're scared of leaving nothing behind that really matters. You go to the doctors because you're scared of dying. Do I need to go on? No. I think that will be all for today. Guards? Today I have another interview with Crane. I cannot say I am looking forward to it. I have been feeling anxious. I don't like to admit it, but I think he's getting to me. How are you today? I keep telling you, this is my session. It was your session, Doctor. But not anymore. Are you okay, Doc? Uh, I think... Uh, yes, I... Oh, he's fine! Just questioning his grip on reality. You should be doing the same any second. What? Is that you? Wait, what are you doing? Get off of me. Help! I need help here! I can't breathe! <laughs> like I said, you're all part of my experiment now. <laughs> Asylum interview one. My experiment is underway. Working alone, I have created my ultimate fear gas. Its potency, a revelation.
I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Through my actions, I have saved this cursed city, though my own curse is to forever remain in the shadows. My story is carved into the very soul of Arkham, and will only be revealed to those dedicated enough to discover it. My family's blood ran through the heart of Gotham. We were doctors, politicians, and teachers. We have been the organ cleaning the arterial filth from the city. We have been its servants, giving all to protect it. And still it has chosen to hurt us. As Gotham's veins slowly filled with pain and suffering, the effects were felt everywhere. My father fell first, infected by some foul disease. My mother lived on, but only in a dream. I returned to the family home to care for her, where she remained in her bed for as long as her body continued to breathe. Her tears kept me awake at night. My journey lasted little over a month. Visiting academics in both Metropolis and Keystone, I was exposed to a wealth of new ideas. I began my day returning home in good spirits, eager to see my wife and family. I ended it kneeling in their blood, broken fragments of my life, pouring through dripping red fingers. I returned to my work, but I could not shake the pictures from my mind. I should have been repulsed, but I was more eager than ever to find an explanation for why someone would do this. They brought the animal before me, shameless and barking like a mad dog. For what felt like days, I endured his boasts. He took pleasure recounting his actions, cataloging his depraved crimes. What should have been revenge turned to pity. This poor dog needed my help. The island changed little over the years. Its reputation was in tatters, but I vowed to fix it. As the buildings were rebuilt, I saw the future. A bright, wonderful future. New brick. Metal and paint covered old wounds. Fresh blood was injected into the body. Bright new minds came, and all swore to uphold our promises. We all knew we were the ones to fix this city, and the city would thank us. My family's killer stood in front of me. Years of therapy have deemed him sane. I was proud to see him walk free. In exchange for his liberty, the state required only a signature. He talked about wanting to walk in a park, how he longed to feel fresh air on his face. And then he took my father's fountain pen and killed my secretary. As he was subdued, he screamed out, pleading for forgiveness, for pity. But I had none. I watched as guards beat him to a stain on the floor. Spring was a turning point, a new beginning, a glorious realization of my true destiny. My family's killer perished in an unfortunate accident. These animals cannot be cured. Like dogs, they only respond to discipline. And if that fails, then I was afraid that these accidents would have to continue. I took a walk around my island. 
I passed by the penitentiary and felt nauseous at the thought of the filth it contained. I looked out over the Gotham Bay, and in the distance I saw lights. No doubt boats bringing more filthy degenerates to my city. I swore again to protect her from this darkness. I argued with the latest group of young, eager doctors. They bored me with theories and ideas, proving that they had no theories on how to cure these animals. Only one shared my vision. I offered her the chance to explore her dreams. She accepted. We'll make a good team. The Gotham police dragged a new patient to the island. They said he was responsible for the disappearance of hundreds of the city's vagrants. As I looked at his disgusting body, all scales and teeth, my mind ran free, dreaming of delicious punishments to break this monster. Doctors gathered around, poking it, examining, but only I knew what would cure him, once and for all. The beast was too strong. His animal savagery nearly cost me my life. I took my frustrations out on a lone patient. His case notes suggested he was a paranoid schizophrenic. His pleas as I beat him to death suggested much more. His confessions were illuminating. My path was clear. Every day I found the patience more distracting. Their insane mutterings and constant twitching disgusted me. There was only one way to cure this evil. Only one way to purify the city and ensure its future. I needed to prepare myself. I needed to be ready. I had a sudden pang of conscience. I sought counsel from my priest on the choices I had made. I asked him if it was a sin to kill in order to save a life. The holy man said all life was sacred, but a judgment would not be upon my soul if I acted to save another. I left the confessional with my soul uplifted, convinced more than ever I am doing a service not only to mankind, but to God as well. I watched in silence as he brought in the woman. Her skin, now a venomous green, the wanton creature no longer looked like a human being, much less a woman. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Yet he has once again delivered this female atrocity to our care. Once I have dealt with the monster, I think it will be time to see if green wood does, in fact, burn. Sitting in the darkness outside of his cell, I watched the crazed twitching, listened to the disgusting words that came from his mouth. How can I let a dirty animal like this live? He is the cancer I have sworn to protect the city from. Curse me for a fool! How could I not see it until now? The monster had a confederate! 
I hid in the darkness near his cell, and saw with my own eyes one of the doctors whispering to him. She looked at him through the transparent barrier with tenderness, with, dare I say, desire. My skin crawled with revulsion as she kissed the glass. Fighting the urge to dash the woman's head through the glass, I let her continue. The damnable clown might have shared secrets with her that would be useful once the mad dog has been executed. I'm sure the woman will reveal what she knows to me. If not willingly, then certainly under electronic persuasion. After that, a lobotomy, I think. Unfortunate for one so young, but her lust has put the reputation of Arkham at stake. Yes, a lobotomy, the very thing. There is no other way to ensure her silence in this regrettable matter. Yet again, I found myself watching him. No one can provide a cure. He laughs in the face of those who try. Amadeus would not have let him live, and neither should I. One last sip of cognac, and I was ready. He watched as I entered the cell. He smiled as I showed him the knife. I told him how I will use it. How I will cleanse this city. And then... Terror. I was paralyzed. I struggled. I screamed, but I was silent. The monster looked at me, expressionless. He ran my blade slowly across my forehead. A smile cracked across his horrible porcelain face. And I heard the filth fall from his mouth. He laughed and called me that horrible name. It must have been Crane, another one who doesn't deserve to live. Why do these people thrive on chaos? Joker, in particular, desired anarchy. And since his escape will no doubt wreak it upon my city, I feel this is the end for my diary. Joker will be recaptured. My story will be told. I am not afraid. If Arkham becomes my cell, then I will know I did my best. I will be remembered. I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Even though Amadeus had long since passed, his spirit lived on. Surviving, moving through the walls of his asylum. When it chose me, I felt proud. I was honored to continue his work, to cleanse this city. If you are strong-willed enough to follow my tales, you are strong-minded enough to deduce my identity. Come and find me, friend. Together. We will save Gotham. My name is Quincy Sharp, the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. You have done well to decipher my story, and I pray it has helped you on your path. I trust that through my writings, you will do what is right. Please, I implore you, continue my work. This city deserves a savior. Continue my work.